Hello, uh, my name is Brother McGill, and I'm back with another lesson of how words are comfort from the Bible. That is, whether words are comfort from the Bible. And like always, before I begin, I'd like to say thank y'all for those who tune in, who watch the Word of God. I pray you stay strong, never give up on your soul, no matter what. So your turn of soul, don't ever give up on it. And for those out here who are in terrible time once again with coronavirus, those who are struggling, those who lost loved ones, stay strong. I'm sorry for what happened, but stay strong. Don't we'll never give up on God no matter what. That is what Satan wants us all to do, to give up. And we, we, if we did give up on God, we never had God for the job. So but don't ever give up on God. you got to stay strong. Just read the Old Testament, Job. How he had stayed strong. He lost his whole entire family and all his wealth. So do not give up no matter what. That's the book of Job, Old Testament. Once again, I'd like to say thank y'all for all y'all support and this, uh, on this channel, helping me to keep on spreading the truth of God's word. I thank y'all so much. And before we begin, I'd like to go to the word of prayer. Gracious Father, our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. As we come to you, dear Lord, today, we just thank you for all the things that you do for us, no matter what goes on in our life, no matter what happens, whether it rains or evil, and only good, dear Lord. We thank you so much, Father God, for all the things that you do for us, giving us air to breathe and clothes to our back and food in our stomachs, dear Lord, and shoes upon our feet. We thank you so much, dear Lord. And we know so many people out here, are unfortunately, things who have lost loved ones, and had this virus or just lost loved ones. And we're reading right now. Right. And for those out here that's going through terrible time and poverty behind this uh, virus, we pray for them, Father God. We pray that, Lord, you help them with bad times, bless them with good times. But, but no matter what, Father God, we, uh, they cannot give up on you. No matter what, they cannot give up, Father God. So build us up all in the faith where we are weak, Father God. Help us all, dear Lord, in the evil times that we live in. Things not going to be easy, dear Lord. It wasn't easy for the disciples back then. It's not going to be easy for us, those who actually are really truly follow the word, Father God. So that's why we have to stay strong no matter what. Dear Lord, I want to say once again, thank you for everything. And for this lesson right now, dear Lord, I pray, Father God, I pray that keep our eyes focused on your word, open up our ears, dear Lord, to the true meaning of your divine holy word. Never, never let us give up, dear Lord, or our turtle soul. We have to stay strong. We just thank you for so much, dear Lord. Wonderful, you will know where we'll be at right now to this day. So I pray these prayers to you in your most divine holy name to keep helping us to grow spiritually, to overcome evil with good, to keep doing things always to set up our pleasing in your sight. And these are prayers I pray to you in your most divine, holy, almighty, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Now, once again, that <coughs> words are comfort from the Bible. And not what I'm saying, it's from the Bible. And turn with me to 2 Peter. For those who can't see, uh, it's 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 12. That is 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 12. Once again out there, that's 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 12. You like, we might read that for me, please. Okay. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Go for one second, please, your mind. God gave us all things pertaining to life through the knowledge of him. He gives all things that pertain to eternal life, excuse me, through the knowledge of him. That means he gave us, through the knowledge of God, we can have eternal life. So, 
You think God gives the knowledge of how to ride a bike? You think everything's what it's talking about? No. You think it's talking about God uh, how to give the knowledge of how to drive a car? No. Talking about the knowledge we have eternal life through the knowledge of Jesus Christ and God, uh, God Almighty. We have uh, uh, eternal life. That's what it's talking about. And remember now, stay focused. Okay, he said the knowledge of God. Now watch this. You might say, come on, read it for me, please. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Stop right there for me, please, once again. Add to your faith. What we'll say, we'll say, it's a, uh, where we at? It's a, uh, we're at four, five, I'm going to just write five. And besides all this, give all diligence to add to your faith, virtue, add to virtue, knowledge. Knowledge of who? Knowledge of God. You add to the, add to your faith, the knowledge of God. And how can I add the knowledge of God in me? Like I said once again, ride a bike. What it's talking about? No, it's not. Drive a car? No, it's not. Get on computer, how I work a computer? No, not the knowledge of that. Add to your faith, virtues, and uh, knowledge. The knowledge of who? God. How do you do that? The Word was God. That's how you add to your faith, knowledge. The Word was God. The Bible says this, and I'm going to show you clearly, clearly. What it actually, it actually said the, the, uh, how you have knowledge. You got to add to your faith knowledge. That means you got to be in the Word of God. You got to grow in the Word of God. Add knowledge to your faith so you can overcome evil with good. When bad things happen, you know how to, you know how to uh, 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 handle it. At one time, I know myself, I know how to handle it. But now as I'm growing the guy, growing his word, growing the guy, I'm getting better and better and better each and every day because I'm growing in the word and his knowledge and patience. I keep on reading for please. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Stop right there for a second, please. <clears throat> I'm so sorry to stop you, but who, people who lack these things, knowledge, brotherly kindness, what else to say? Brotherly kindness, you acknowledge, you know, like temperance, which means self control, you know, like uh, patience, you know, like you lacking these things, then you don't have God in you. If you're lacking these things, you don't have God in you, you don't have the knowledge of God in you. Us to have these things in silence first, we got to put the knowledge of God in us. If we don't got it already, you can't go to Walmart and go buy out the shelf, you can't go uh, to a uh, uh, quick trip and buy. No. God put it inside you the knowledge of God. Don't let me or no one tell you nothing different but what the Word of God says. And then if you don't have any things that you're lacking, you forgot who purged you from your sin. You forgot about these things. So now it's okay for me to go out here at party, hoop and holler, go to club and stuff like that. You forgot that God will want to save your soul. The God of one that purged you, should be purged you from your sin. God of one. Jesus Christ did. He died on the cross. You forgot. And you lacking these things. I ain't killing, raping, robbing. You are lacking these things. You forgot all about it. That Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, had purged you from our sin. Keep on reading for us, please. What for the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure? For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Both for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So hold on one more second, please. So if I add to my faith knowledge, but with knowledge, temperance, brotherly kindness, and love, then you know what? 
It says right here, verse 11, for so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If I add the virtues to what? My faith. First, I got to put the faith in me. Then I have the knowledge of God in me. I can add a brotherly kindness, that love. Even though people out here might hate you. You know, people out here make you mad, make you upset. You know what? I know, trust me. And I know, it's hard. We still love them. You pray for them. Can okay, why you add it to your faith? All these things the Bible tells you to do. See, a lot of people out here believe that man wrote the Bible. No, the Bible clearly tells us that the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. This can't be bad, all right, to do it. The Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. Wrote the Bible. People are all mad with the Bible. I, I hear that a lot. Man, I'm going to even think a man wrote the Bible. No, uh The Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. This can't do man to do it. Uh, keep going. Uh, please. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. John 17, 17. Jesus Christ said, The word is the truth. Be established in the word. As Gospel of John 17, 17, Jesus Christ himself says the word is the truth. So you be established in the present, the, the present truth. That means be established in the word. So you know. So you know. But that bad time come your way, you know how to handle it. You know, you make make you mad and angry, whatever, but you know how to handle it better before you have before you even know God. You know how to handle it now. I know myself, because I didn't know how to handle it. So I just go off. But now, now I'm getting better and better each and every day when bad things come my way. I'm added to my faith, these virtues, patience. And I pray for God. Keep giving me patience. Keep giving me all the knowledge I need, all the wisdom I need every way. You keep praying. You stay in God's word. Confess your sin. And keep doing what God has to tell you to do, what the word tells you to do. I'm not saying this, but the Bible says this. This is what God said. The word was God. If you listen to God's word, you didn't listen to God. Uh, stay in the book of Peter. For those out there, turn to me from uh, 1 Peter. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. That is 1 Peter. Chapter 2, 1 through 3. Let's turn over. That's 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3. Follow God by the word. G. Christ is the word of God in the flesh. Gospel of John chapter 1 through 14. He's the word in the flesh. Once again, that's 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3. And it also reads, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and enemies, of, of enemies and all evil speaking. I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. What you put, what, what, what you put to grow? With the word. You add to your faith knowledge. You grow in the word. Add to your faith knowledge. The virtues, knowledge. Clearly tells you right here, a newborn babe desire that's a sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You need a word to grow out of malice, evilness, backbiting, hatred, lying. We all have sinned and fell short of glory of God. We all have sinned. But we need to grow out of certain things by the word of God. That's how we grow. This, 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 that, that throw a thing it caps real fast. If the word was God, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. And, and uh, God is sinless. And the word was God. Do you think if I put this word in me, I should be sinless too? And the word was God, and he's sinless? If I put this word in me, I should be sinless too. If I put this word in me, 
kept you to grow. It kept you to grow out of things that was a it was hard for you at one time. You couldn't overcome at one time, but now it helped you to grow. It helped you to see something you thought you could never see out here. Spiritual things. You could see how a person is now. At first you couldn't see that. But now you can see that by what? Growing in the word of God. But at first you was you was lost. You couldn't really see it. Because uh, evil, sin is deceitful. Sometimes sin hides and it hides and it can let you know that it's a sin. But both sin, like I said in the book of Hebrew, is deceitful. Look, that's why you grow in the knowledge of God. And I'll show you how to grow through God's word. Grow in the knowledge. How? The words, these are the words you grow. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8. And get there. I think I'm going to see That is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8. And it reads For one from uh for to one is given by the Spirit. The word of wisdom. What we need to grow, we need the word to grow. And to another, the word of knowledge. What? Grow in knowledge. And to your virtue, knowledge. <coughs> By the same spirit. Because without the spirit, you will not have eternal life. Without the spirit, you will not have eternal life. The Bible speaks that. I'm not saying that. Without the spirit, of uh, God in you, Holy Spirit, you will not have eternal life. Don't let no man sit with you because I just go to church and I'm saved. I'm not saying I have to go to church. I'm not saying I have to be around members. I'm not saying that. Don't let nobody sit with you. That's all I have to do and I'm saved because they are lying to you. Promise you that. I've been to see, listen to man. So I came to the word of God for myself. And now my eyes is open. And I grow in God's word. And I keep on seeing Sin, sin, and sin, evil. I'm not, once again, I'm not saying not to go to church. I'm not saying I go to church. I'm not saying not to listen to uh, your preacher. I'm not saying I uh, uh, can't give your memory. Fellowship, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying this, that alone will not save you. Be not deceived. If we grow in the word, the Spirit gives you wisdom of the Word and knowledge of the Word by the exact same Spirit. It gives you knowledge. We got to grow in what? In knowledge. After your virtue, knowledge. How? What we need to grow? Do Excuse me. What we need to grow? The Word. We need the Word to grow. Let's move on. Acts chapter 20, 24. And I pray that y'all out there who watch the videos, y'all uh, take your time out. Grab your Bible. Uh, uh, King James Version Bible, not New King James Version, King James Version Bible. Grab your Bible and sit down and study with me. Study with me. I pray that. I pray that you do that. Because it don't simply just listen, because that's not going to do you no good. Because the Bible said, uh, you only deceive in your own self, the book of James. Hear other words, you only deceive in your own self. But get your Bible. Sit down and study these scriptures for yourself. And you will see for yourself. Stay in the word of God for yourself and know God's word for yourself. You can't be deceived. But if I don't know God's word, I can be what? Deceived. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. That's Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. Once again, that's Acts chapter 20 and, uh, through 24. Once 
again for those out there. That's Acts chapter 20, verse 24. And it reads, this is how you have grace. This is how you have grace. Listen very carefully. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul wrote that. The gospel of the grace of God. So what is his grace? The gospel is his grace. So think about it. If I have his gospel in me, I have his grace in me. I hear so many people I say, oh, we're saved by his grace, we're saved by his grace. I just said, I said, we're saved by the grace of God. Not knowing that I got to have the gospel in me, that's his grace will be in me. And that's how I'm saved, by the grace of God. If you don't believe that, just turn over, just uh, turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 20, 28 through 32. That's Acts chapter 20, 28 through 32. Once again, that's Acts chapter 20, 28 through 32. And it reads, Take heed therefore to yourself and to all the flock over there which the Holy Ghost had made you overseas, overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his old blood. For I know that I, for I know this, excuse me, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not spare the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I seek not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you a heritage among all them which are sanctified and be set apart by Jesus Christ in his heart. The word of his grace. Now, let's, let's think about, put your thinking caps on once again for me. Colossians 3.16, Colossians 3.16 tells us and let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And this is the word of his grace. So if I have the word in me, I have his grace in me. <laughs> and I'm not sure I say my grace through faith. If I have his word in me, I have his grace in me. Don't be deceived. If I don't have his word in me, I don't have his grace in me. I thought, trust me out there, brothers and sisters, I thought the exact same thing. Until I came to the word of God. I was saved by his grace. I was saved by his grace. I, all that I do, I had to go to church and that's it. Get water baptized, that's all I have to do. And I have to do nothing else. I still live my exact same life. Not knowing that I had to grow in the word of God. Because Jesus Christ also tells us that the, the uh, faith of our hearing the word of God, Romans, uh, 10, 17. Jesus Christ said the words that he speaks are spirit and is life eternal. Gospel of John six, uh, chapter 6. That's Gospel of John chapter 6 62 to 63. The, Jesus Christ said the words are spirit and is life eternal. So I had a word dwelling in me. I had the spirit dwelling in me. It also is his grace. If I had a, if I have his grace, if I have the word in me, I have his grace in me. It also is a faith. If I have the word in me, I have his faith in me. That's how you have faith in you. Do not be deceived. If you care anything about your eternal soul, pick up the Bible, study these scriptures with me. Scriptures are right here. If you really care, and you believe the saving of, of your soul. Pick up the Bible, study these scriptures with me. You'll see for yourself. Ask, pray to God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your divine, of his divine holy word. Obey the gospel. Confess your sins. So I'm doing a lesson about that. Hopefully next time I remember. I'm doing a lesson about, the, about confessing your sins. You got to do all these things what the Bible tells us to do if you want to have eternal life. 
Don't, like once again, I, I know I say this a lot. But don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in God by the gospel. Like it says in uh, Ephesians. Put your trust in God, Christ by the gospel. You don't know God. I don't know why I can know God by this. That's how I put my trust in him. You see how this world is today? How evil this world is? See, see what's going on right now in this world? People are hating each other, kind of color their skin. People are racist, haters, backbiting, lying. You can't trust nobody. It was worse in my back, back when I was young, but now it is went pathetic. And these kids are disobedient to their parents, like out of, I mean, disobedient. People are doing what they want to do out here. They don't care. They live for what they want to do. They have, they have no a fear of God in their eyes at all. And they live their life and what they want to do out here. They for, they put this down so I live my life the way I want to. Don't fall like that. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to fall like that. Let's finish up. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. That Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. And I'm going to show you how you say by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. That Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Let me get there. Ephesians chapter 2. And it reads, that Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. And it reads, For by grace <laughs> are ye saved. You're saved by what? Grace. Through faith. Remember now, we're saved by grace through faith. If I keep on reading. Faith come by what? Hear the word of God. We got to read it. Acts. Faith about what? Hear the word of God. Romans uh, 10, 17. That's the word. And it's a word of his grace. If I had a, a word in me, I had a faith in me. And I also would have a grace in me. His grace in me. Once again, for by grace are you saved through faith. Faith come out here in the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Right here. The word of his grace. Acts 20, 20. 28 to 32. So if I have a word in me, I have a faith in me. And I also will have his grace in me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. So if I got that word in me, I have his grace in me. I also will have a spirit in me. I also have a faith in me. If I have that word in me, if I let the word of Christ Colossians 3 16 dwell in you richly. It, don't, it says that for a reason. <sighs> if, 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 this, if I had to have a word of Christ dwell in me, it won't say it. It says that for a reason. I don't understand. Out here, it's a lot of people out here, God's to be one of them. I listen to my doctors, I listen to what other people say. I listen to what my job say. I listen to this. I listen to this. I listen to this. There's ain't nothing wrong with that. When it comes to the word of God, I do not listen to it at all. I didn't listen to it at all back then. No, I, well, I got water baptized. That's all I got to do. I didn't listen to it at all. I, st I kept living my life the way I wanted to. I ain't listen to it. I don't understand right now today, that, you know, because I see it right now. I can't judge nobody. God's the ultimate judge. But God do give you give you give you the wisdom and knowledge and the understanding understanding, you know, like, of him. You know, like, if God can see evil, common sense tell you if God's in you, if God can see evil, that common sense should tell you that if I got God in me and God's the spirit, I should be able to see evil too. That's how you can refrain from evil. That's how you can stay, you can uh, overcome evil because you can see evil. 
Right, uh, uh, Gospel of John, right, clearly tells us that. Right? Clearly tells us that. Not Gospel of John, first John, sorry. It clearly tells us that. Matter of fact, let's go there real fast. Let's go there real fast. First John, first John, chapter 5. Look at first John, chapter 5. And verse 19. First John, chapter 5, verse 19. That's not verse 18. That's first John. That's first John, chapter 5, and verse 18 and 19. That's first John, first John, chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. And it reads, uh, I'm sorry, let's start at verse 17. All righteousness is a sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touch him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. We can see it. We can clearly see it. It's just, it, clearly, it, just, it clearly can be seen. Right? Clearly. Or, he goes, oh, no, we'll go to Hebrews with me. Real fast. It's Hebrews with me. Chapter 5. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5. I think it's verse 12. Let's see. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. That's Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Do not take your soul for granted. Do not take your soul as a joke. This is serious business we're talking about right here. This is serious business right here. That's Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12 uh, to 14. And it reads, from when the time ye are to be teachers, ye have uh, need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is a skeptical in the word of rashness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discourage both good and evil. Okay, you got the word of righteousness in you. And you can see good and you can know you know good things, you know evil things. I promise you that. If you actually follow God. You ain't judging nobody. But you can see it. That's how you overcome evil. By the word of righteousness. By the word of God. Let's finish up. Uh, uh, turn me to Second Peter. Second Peter. At uh, ch chapter three. This will be very understandable. Right here, chapter three and verse twelve through eighteen. That's Second Peter. Second Peter. Chapter uh, 3, 12 through 18. Let's see. That's once again, that's Second Peter, chapter 3, 12 to 18. We probably read the 14. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hold on a second. That's a New Jerusalem book of Revelation called the New Jerusalem. But that's none less but came on for one thing. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto oh. their own destruction. Thank you very much. Uh, they, they, what they do, because they don't know the word of God, 
They don't pick the Bible up. But come on Sundays, they put that form of God in zone. And they sit up there on the pulpit. And they start screaming and shouting. Words out of the word of God. I don't know nothing about the word. And, and, what, and what I, the reason why I say because I saw it before. The reason why I say it because I've seen this before in my own two eyes. And for two, the Bible says it as well. But they have wrestled with their own because they don't know it. They say any and everything. And tell people any and everything not the truth. I see this that's all over the internet. It's all lies. But majority of them on the internet is majority of lies. It's lies. Trust me, I take my Bible and I'm right there and I'll just listen to what they be saying sometimes, you know, sometimes the th things I see on the internet, you know, there's a bunch of lies out here just saying anything. People come out and tell you anything to try to just to try to make you feel better but not tell you the truth, what you need to hear so you have eternal life. But it's to make you feel better so you keep on coming, keep on coming to church. But not really tell you the true meaning of what God's word say, and so you can have eternal life. They ain't studying, they ain't studying the word. The Bible says so. And they telling you anything. That's why you gotta know the word of God for yourself. So when people up there saying something that you know is not in the Bible, you know, well, they ain't following Christ. You know, I try to bring them to the truth, but they don't want to hear it. You better leave. Okay. And uh, keep, uh, uh, keep reading it for me. He therefore, beloved. Thing you know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. See what I'm saying? Stay fast in the Bible, you right? Know, you fall away if that person said anything, anything to you. Oh, okay, okay, that's what they mean, you know, right? Get back in your court, eat church, get back in your court, go home, you right? Know, you're not standing in the Word of God, because they ain't standing in the Word of God. I'm not just saying that the Bible says that. They ain't staying in the Word of God, and you ain't staying in the Word of God. So how do you know they tell you the truth? They can tell you anything. How do you know they tell you the truth? If they're, if they're not staying in the Word of God, how do how, how you know they tell you the truth? If you don't know the Word of God. And uh, the last one, please. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3. We need a word to what? Grow. What it says right here, uh, 2 Peter 18, but grow, but grow in grace. The word of his grace. The word of his grace. Excuse me, the word of his grace. But grow in grace. We need a word to grow, right? And the word is his grace. But grow in grace. In the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow in the knowledge. <laughs> you read that very first one. You grow in knowledge. How? By the word. That's his grace. That's how we have grace in us. Without his word in us, we would not have grace in us. It's a word of his grace. That's why the Bible tells us, but grow in grace. In the knowledge. Go how? By the word. And the word is his grace. And we say by grace, which is his word through faith, which is his word. That's how we say. So that no one, including me, no one, take nothing different with what the Bible says. Well, you got to know the word of God for yourself, and this is eternal life anyway. By knowing the word of God, knowing God is eternal life anyway. you got to know the word of God. Don't take things for granted. If you, if you can get up in the morning, take a shot. Go to work. Get on the computer. Get on the cell phone. Do what you do out here every day. Make time for the word of God. Make time and study, obey the gospel, and study his word. Make time for that. And distance yourself away from evil things and evil people. Distance yourself away from that. And you will never get your life together. Keep hanging around people that are not following Christ. They follow his world. I'm not saying not to hate them. You love your brothers and sisters out here. But you distance yourself away from people you know is not right. Do that. If you want to turn on life, you really care about your soul, do that. And if you ain't trying to do that, then you don't care about your eternal soul. I love all my brothers and sisters out there, whether I know you or not. And I teach the gospel strictly from the word of God. Strictly. The gospel strictly for the Bible. Strictly. 
The scriptures are right here. Take time out. Study God's word. Don't ever give up on your eternal soul. Look at how this world is right now to this day. It's a mess. You never know where God will call you home. He will ask you, you, had, you had, and, and ask yourself, have I obeyed God? Excuse me. Ask yourself, has I, did I obey God? I had time to get it right on earth, but you know what? I obeyed his word. But I did not obey God. Satan did not obey God. He would cast out of heaven. Him and his angels. They would cast out. And Revelation tells us that. They would cast out of heaven. And he, he was not obeying God. What makes think you will go to heaven? The New Jerusalem. Where you get judged. And you're not obeying God yourself. By his word. Think about that. Keep that thinking cap on. Think about that. Satan, when the glorious angel was cast out, what thing will happen to me? If I don't obey God, as a lot of scriptures in here tells us that. I'm not just saying that, but a lot of scriptures in here says that. Right? You better obey God. The love of my heart, I plead with you. I implore you. Stay in the word of God. Know God for yourself. And obey. Jesus brought us the New Testament. It starts in the book of Matthew. All the way to Revelation. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Uh, first and second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, uh, first and second Timothy, uh, uh, Titus, and, and Jude, Hebrew, James, uh, first and second Peter, first and second, third John, Jude, and Revelation. That's some New Testament books. And you better make sure you labor in the gospel, study so yourself approved with a God like uh, second Timothy. Uh, 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 chapter 2 verse 15 say study show yourself prove it to God that's 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 saying God where I'm not saying not to read the Old Testament because I read it myself but we don't live in the Old Testament we, we under faith now which is the word of God under faith and grace we're not under uh, the old law but in that role read the Old Testament to learn from that but you better make sure you are standing in those books and New Testament of faith that Jesus Christ brought us. I love you, brothers and sisters out there. I try to come back with the next video. Y'all take care. God bless y'all, and I love you. Let's go in prayer. Uh, most kind of heavenly Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, once again, dear Lord, I want to say thank you for allowing me to give me the time, dear Lord. And, uh, you know, it's bad weather outside, but give me the time, dear Lord, to come up here. Speak your divine holy word, the true meaning of your word from the Bible. And I thank you so much for that, Father God. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters out there who watched, uh, who, they don't watch me, they watch someone else who actually teach you the gospel. May they may they stay fast in your word, grow in your word, dear Lord. It's not about me. It's not about me at all. Not about those who teach the gospel, dear Lord, but about saving souls, Father God. They don't obey you by the gospel. It's not about no one else, but the no one else about obeying you, Father God, by the gospel, dear Lord. So I pray for all of you, Lord. Once again, have us all stay in the faith. Who say they believe and trust in you, have us stay in the faith. No matter what, never give up on an eternal soul. Stay strong and never give up, no matter what, dear Lord. In a simple, uh, toward generation that we live in, dear Lord, have us to stay strong, dear Lord. Stay in your word, dear Lord. I pray that your word will keep on growing to those who really want to hear the truth and want to believe the Savior of the soul and stay and believe it come to you by your word and stay in your word, growing your word, Father God. I pray for us all, Father God, once again, for those going through a terrible time with coronavirus, dear Lord. No matter what it might be, coronavirus or going through poverty, Father God, whatever they struggle they're going through, Father God, when you have them in bad times, bless them in good times, dear Lord. And fill them up in the faith once again, where they are weak. Dear Lord, one for you, I don't know where we'll be at right now to this day, dear Lord. I, I pray for my brothers and sisters, just don't give up on their eternal soul. Never give up. Keep us strong, Father God. Help us, dear Lord, to overcome this evil world that we live in, dear Lord. Help us, Father God. Help us, dear Lord, to keep doing things that you have us to do that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. We thank you for everything, dear Lord. We thank you for this lesson, dear Lord. We, we pray, dear Lord, that your word will keep on growing to those who really want to hear the truth once again, dear Lord. We pray for those out here who will actually teach the gospel, dear Lord. We keep them strong, dear Lord. Have them stay fast in your word. Keep on spreading your word as well. Save, Satan got his evil 
uh, ministers out here who spread lies and not the truth. So why not can you have your servants out here spreading the true meaning of your divine and holy word? Word, word, excuse me, word, dear Lord. I love you. I believe you and I trust you, Father God. We, we really do love and believe and trust you, Father God. So keep wash over us all. That's why we pray to you, dear Lord. Okay, you're the apple of the maker, the Lord, Lord, King, and King. Wash and protect us all. Keep us safe the only way you can, Father God. And these prayers, I pray to you once again in your, your most divine, holy, and mighty, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Take care. God bless. And never give up your eternal soul.